In this video series, we're going to go over how to set up a sales page using WordPress. Now, there are several reasons you may want to use WordPress to create a sales page. First of all, WordPress is like search engine candy. The search engines really like things built with WordPress. Secondly, there are a lot of functions you can add by way of plugins using WordPress. And thirdly, if you don't know anything about designing a web page, it's really easy to do with WordPress. And I'm going to show you how to take a basic theme, just change a few lines of code, and it's very simple. I'll show you right where to do it and right and what you need to put in there. And then you'll be ready to just type in your sales copy, and you have a sales page that's very search engine optimized and looks professional. Now the sales page we're going to create is going to look something like this. Okay, so it'll look basically like this, but it's going to be built over WordPress. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is install WordPress. Now there's a couple ways to do that. You can use the files that you see right here, or you can use Fantastico if it's included with your web hosting package. In Fantastico, there's a place where you can do a two-click install just by filling out a couple things. But I'm just going to show you quickly how to do it here. So we're going to download this which is the most recent version. We'll download it in zip format and we'll save it into a working folder on our desktop here. Okay, so we'll just save it here. Okay, and of course you're gonna need web hosting and a domain name. I'm gonna assume that you already have those things and that you're ready to upload your files. Okay, so here is the file we just downloaded. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to unzip it. I have a program called 7-Zip installed that you can get for free. Okay, so you can use 7-Zip if you want. Just do a search on 7-Zip and install it. Now there's also extract all here and you can just extract them with the Windows built-in extraction tool. So we'll just do that. It takes a minute here to get that done. Okay, so at this point, once we have that done, we need to upload these files. Now to do that, you can use a program called FileZilla, which you can download for free as well. It's an FTP client, and here's what it looks like here. So on the left side is where you navigate to to find your files. On the right side is going to be where you hook up to your server. Okay, so to hook up, you just put your host name in here, which is your domain name. So you registered a domain name at GoDaddy or Namecheap or wherever you rent, register it. And that's going to be what goes in here. Okay, and then when you set up your hosting account to attach to your domain name, you get a username and password from your hosting account. And you put all that information in here. And then that will connect you up to your server. It also has a site manager. So you can put your sites into the site manager and then you can just go into the site manager and connect to them. Okay so on this side is my WordPress files that I've unzipped so if I go inside here there's a directory called WordPress and that's what I want to upload. Okay I have all this other stuff in here that doesn't matter right now so we're going to upload this and that uploads all of our WordPress files. Now WordPress runs on a database so we're going to need to go set up a database for WordPress to run from. Okay, so what we do is we log into our hosting control panel. I'm going to show you how to do it with cPanel hosting because that's what I use, but you will always have a way to create a MySQL database if you're using Plesk or whatever different type of control you're using for your hosting account. You just need to create the database and the username in there that attaches to your database. Okay, so here's how we do it with cPanel. Okay, so this is my cPanel account, and there's lots of things I can do in here. But what I want to do is go down to Databases, right here. And then I'm going to use the Database Wizard. So if we go into here. Okay, then we give it a database name. Now there's a extension on the front here, and that is just how it identifies your files for your account. Okay, so I'm going to call this SPGE. You can call them whatever you want. So I go to next step. Okay, and then we need to set up a username. I'm just going to use the same username as I did for the database. You can use anything you want here though. 
and then we need a password. Now it's a good idea to use the password generator and then just copy this. Open a notepad session and paste it in here. Okay, and that's so we have it later. Click that I have copied this somewhere safe and use password. Now we have a very strong password. Okay, so now we're going to create the user. Now what we need to do is select all privileges, go to next step. Okay, and now we're done. Okay, so here we have the name of our username, so let's copy that over to our document here. Okay, so there's our username and password. And then our database names up here. So if you use a different username, it's good to keep your username and password together so you can tell the difference and then put your database up top here in your notes. Okay, so here's our database name. All right, now our database is now created, so we're done with that part. Now let's go check on our upload process, and we're still going here. We'll just wait for this to finish. Okay, now it's all done. So what we want to do, we could have done this on the other side, but let's rename WordPress. And we'll call it, you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it Sales Backend. Now the way we're going to set this up is we're going to have the WordPress install files in this sales backend and we're going to end up with our home page on the root of the domain. So when you type in the domain name, the sales page comes up. Now this is just an option to, uh, optional way to set it up. You could also just have your sales page hosted right in here. It's easy to do either way. Okay, so now all we got to do is type in the URL to our WordPress install. Okay, and it comes up. Now we just let it create a configuration file and click let's go. Okay, now this is where we're going to put in all of our information. So we go back to our notes that we took here and here's our database name. So we'll put that in there. And then we copy our username into here. I made them the same, so that's fine. Our password is here. So we'll take that and paste it in there. Next we have our database host. This is usually going to be right, but a way you can tell is to go back to your where you set up your databases. In my case, it's control panel. Okay, roll down until you find PHP My Admin and click on that. Okay. Okay, now right up top there where I have it highlighted, it says localhost. And that's how you can verify your host. So that's what it needs to be. Okay, so that's right here. Now change the table prefix. Don't, don't leave the default table prefix in here. What the table prefix is, is it's a set of characters that goes in front of everything so that you can differentiate different databases within or different sets of data within the same database. So you could put as many WordPress installs inside this database as you wanted. You just give them different prefixes. Okay, so let's just change that to SP click submit okay and then run the install okay now we give it a site title doesn't really matter at this point we can change it later so we're going to just say sales page okay username don't use admin again this is for security reasons there are hacks out there there are programs that hack automatically and look for certain things Okay, and then you can put your password in here. Okay, now down where it says, well, you're going to have to put your email in here as well because it'll email you your information in case you forget it. And then here, allow my site to appear in search engines. Say, uncheck that right now. Now we can, we're going to recheck this later. While we're working on it, we don't want that to be seen and install WordPress. Okay, so 
We log in now. Okay, and at this point, WordPress is all installed and ready to go. In the next video, we're going to start setting up the internals for our sales page. Okay, in this video, we're going to do some basic setup. Now, if we're to have a look at what we have right now, there it is. Now, this doesn't look anything like what our final result needs to be. So we need to do a few things. Okay, so let's go back to the dashboard here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get a new theme. And the theme we're going to use is called Kubrick. So go over to where it says Appearance and Themes. And then we're going to do Install Themes. Okay, so here in under Search, put in K-U-B-R-I-C-K and Search. Okay, now Kubrick is the original default theme for WordPress. So we're going to install that. And then we're going to activate it. Okay, now when we go look at this, it's starting to look a little more like what a sales page looks like. A sales page usually has some background, has a header, and then it has a linear layout. Okay? So that's what our basis is going to be. We're going to base the whole thing on Kubrick. Okay, let's go now over to widgets. And what we're going to do is we're going to take them all out. All you got to do is grab them and drag them over to the left. Okay, and then we can just drag one basic one over there, which is called a text. Just so there's a placeholder there. Otherwise, it uses the default set of the sidebar. It uses whatever they put in for the sidebar. Okay, now if we go have a look. Okay, so now we're getting closer. We have a linear layout here. We don't have the sidebar in there. But you notice everything is lined up to the left, and we're going to fix that in a little while. Okay, so let's go back to dashboard. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is we want to get rid of all the junk that's in here. So if we go to all posts, we want to get rid of the Hello World post that it put in when we installed. Same with pages. We want to get rid of the sample page. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is go to plugins and we want to go to add new. Okay, what we're looking for here is something called Headspace 2. So search for the plugin. Okay, and then we want to install and activate. Now Headspace 2 gives us some um, powerful things we can do with our posts. We can put in meta tags in there and so on using Headspace. Okay, now let's go over to settings. Now in here, this is where you could change your title to be what your sales page is about. So in our case, we want to have it secure your WordPress blog. Okay, so make this say the same thing here. Now we're actually not going to see this when on our final page, but it is still seen behind the scenes. Okay, and then our tagline, we can just take that out of there. Okay, now down here where it says anyone can register, you might want to make sure that that is unchecked. And then that's really all we need to do in this part. Okay, go to discussion. And then we want to uncheck allow link notifications. Allow people to post comments. You want to uncheck that as well. Okay, so that turns off all the comments. Okay. 
Okay, in permalinks, now normally you would want to set this to be the post name. So all you got to do is click there where it says post name and save changes. Okay, and that will create that for us. Now, the next thing we need to do is set up our page. So we're going to add a new page. And then this is going to be where we are going to actually do the ent entry of our sales page. So this is where the text entry goes in. So we need to give it a title here. And we can give it the same title that we had on our sales page. Okay, and our sales page title is actually Secure Your WordPress Blog Against Hackers. Okay, so we'll go here. Okay, now, one thing, here's a little trick for you. To center this, we can put these tags in here. So center, like that, and then here we put slash center in these tags. And what this will do is it will get the title center, and you're going to see what I mean by that in a sec. Okay, so sales page. Okay, now remember what I said about headspace. We have our page title, and here we have our description. And then in here, under advanced, we have JavaScript and style sheets where we can change some more things. And there's some other things that we can do within headspace. Okay, so for now, we can just leave this as it is. Okay, now, what we're going to do now is we're going to publish the page. I just put some holding text in here. So let's publish the page. Now we need to go back to settings and reading. And this is where we set our page as our home page. So we click a static page and then we set this as our front page and save. Okay, at this point we have our basic setup done. So if we go here now and we go to visit site, you'll see that we have up here in the header, we have secure your WordPress blog, WordPress blog. Here we have secure your WordPress blog against hackers, and it's centered. But as you see, it's centered in this area. We still have this sidebar over here. Okay, and these are some of the tweaks we're going to do. Okay, so that's the end of the basic WordPress setup. In the next video, we're going to start getting into some tweaks here that will get this looking more like a sales page. Okay, so in this video, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to create a template that doesn't have the sidebar on it so that we get to use the entire width of the page. Now, if we go back to dashboard here, and if we were to look at, if we could go to posts for it, so let's go and add a new post. We're going to delete this later, but let's just put test here and test here. Okay, and let's publish this. Okay, now let's view the post. Now you notice that the post doesn't have the sidebar in here. It just has the content in the middle and some other stuff down here. Okay, so what we need to do is create a template that sort of works like the post. Okay, so let's go back to dashboard here and let's just delete that now just go into posts and let's just trash this thing I just wanted to show you what we need to accomplish now if we go back to our pages and go to all pages and then if we edit our what's going to be our sales page if we look down here where it says page attributes we have default template archives and links okay now archives and links are not right either so what we need to do is we need to create a template and put it in here that show that only shows the 
middle part. It only shows the middle and gets rid of the sidebar. Okay, to do that, we're going to create a new template. And I'm actually going to give this to you. You don't have to do any coding. You just have to upload it. Okay, so you see here, here's the file I gave you. That was included with your package. So all you got to do is upload that into where the themes is. So it default theme. Upload that into there. Then when we go back and let's refresh this or let's just uh, hit all pages again and go back in to edit it. Now look what we have here, no sidebar. Click on that and update. Okay now we're gonna go and have a look at the page now. Okay now you see over here that we have the text is not lining up quite right over here. It's over to the left and we won't worry about that now. I'm going to show you how we fix that a little later in the video series. Okay, so for now we're going to leave that as it is. Okay, now the next thing you want to do is you want to update the header and the footer. So let's go over to themes. Okay, now we're going to go to editor. Okay, and then over here we want to go to footer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of everything underneath this div ID equals footer. So just get rid of all of this. Okay, right to the second div there. Okay, like that. Okay, now you need to leave this down here because it gets some WordPress functions, this WP footer and this body and this HTML. Now, we're going to come back here a little later and we're going to put some content in here to put our site footer in here, if you have a site footer. Okay, so let's update that. Okay, and then let's go visit the site. You see now that we've got rid of all of this stuff down below that we don't need. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the dashboard and we're going to use a new site header. Now if you've had a header built for your site you would use that and since we're going to emulate uh, this the sales page that we have here, okay, so we've, we've got this in here, we're going to emulate this. So this is what we're going to put up top for our header. So to do that we need to upload that. So we'll go over to media and we're going to add new. Okay then what we're going to do is we're going to drop that into here. So we'll go to our folder and then we'll go into our images. Okay and here is where I have my header. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to drag that in here. Okay, now it's a good idea to give this um, search engine information in case it gets indexed by Google Images, you'll have some information here. So you can give it a title and you can give it some alternate text that's search engine friendly. You can also give it a description down here. Okay, and we'll save the changes. Okay, now if we were to view this, Okay, now let's click on this. Here is the actual image. Now, right click on this. We want to copy the image location. Okay, now we have the actual image that we're going to use for our header. So we're going to, let's go back here. Let's go back into our dashboard. Now what we want to do is we're going to be replacing this with the header that we just create that we just uh, uploaded. Okay, so let's go to themes and then we're going to go to editor. Okay, and then we're going to go to the style sheet. Okay, and it comes up automatically. Now what we're looking for here is the header and it's going to be near the top. So this is our body, our page, and our header. Okay, so our header URL 
here we're going to replace that with what we just copied okay so we'll go over overwrite that do a paste okay and then we're going to update okay now let's go have a look at our site so we'll visit a site let's just open this in a new window here okay so here is our header now you see we have a bunch of issues here first of all the header is thinner than our blog here than our than we have set and we also have this shining through here so we're going we need to take care of that as well okay so back here where it has the background we wanted to set this to white which is let's go here F, 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 F. Okay, so let's update that. Okay, and here, where it says width, it says 740. We need to change that to 650 because that's the width of our header. So let's update. Now we also want to change this 192 to the height of our image. Okay, so if we go back to here, and we do properties and details you'll see that our height is 119 okay so let's change this to 119 okay so to review we're changing the URL under header to the header image URL where we just uploaded to our media library here we are changing this header image width and height to the same dimensions as our header that we're using. So let's update that. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to roll down for a ways until we see body structure. Okay, so it's down quite a ways. Okay, here we go. Begin structure and body. Okay, now here you see page, background color white, margin 20 pixels, and here we have width 760. We need to set that to 650. Okay, and here we have the border that we have around there. You can leave that as it is, or you could take the border out just by removing that line. Okay, now down here we have our header. We also need to change this to be 650 and our height to be 119. Okay, and here's our height again under header image 119. Okay, so header image, header. We need to be changing these things here as well. Okay, now let's update that. okay now you see we have things lining up now now we still have the problem of you'll see that our header is overwriting in here now to change that we need to go back over here we need to go to header and then in here you'll see here we have I just done a little further down here so right at the bottom you'll see see this is the very bottom of the file and you'll see here you see div id equals header role equals banner and then what you want to do is get rid of this h1 stuff here get that out of there and then down here you want to get rid of this line that says description just take that line right out of there okay and then we're going to update this and then when we go back here and we refresh you'll see that we now have our header 
in there properly and now things are lining up properly because we have set everything to be the same width as the image here. Okay, now the next thing we would do is put our footer underneath here. So we can go back to here and go to footer. Okay, and this is where we would put in our footer image information. So what we do is we go to media and add new. Okay, now I'm going to upload my site footer. If you don't have one, then of course you wouldn't put it in. So let's go footer. Now same thing here. You can put in your information here to give it a little more search engine juice. Okay, and save the changes. Okay, now let's view this. Actually, this is the one here. So we view and click on it. Okay, here it is. And then right click, copy image location. Okay, now let's go backwards here. And let's go to our appearance and editor. Now over here to footer. And then we're going to right where this where we took the stuff out before, let's paste this in here. Now we're gonna put this in as a link, as an image link. So you need to put it in like this. You need to put image source equals paste the URL in that we just got and then put in a closing tag like that okay and then we want to center this so we'll use the old school tag here because it's easier so center and slash center like so. Let's update. Okay, and then let's go and refresh our site here. Okay, so there it is. We have our header, we have our footer, and our sales content is going to go in here. The only thing left is the background. Now we have a custom background as well. When we go in here, this is our background we have here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our style sheet and we're going to change the background. So back here to themes, editor. Okay, and we're going to do this in the style sheet. And when we roll up a little bit here, we have our body and then we have background URL. Okay, this is where we're going to put it right here. Okay, so let's go back actually let's open another thing here let's go to media and now we're going to upload our background so add new and then we're going to drag our background into there okay and then you can do the same thing here again give it some search engine juice by putting in some descriptions okay and save changes Okay, here it is. So we'll view, click, and then right click on here and we'll copy image location. Okay, now let's go back to our other page here that we have up. And right where our background is here that I was showing you. Okay, so right where it says body and then you see background, URL, and images cubic color dot jpg we're going to paste this right in here and then we're going to update okay now let's view our site okay and there it is okay so our background is here and we have our header our footer all we have to do now is start putting in our sales copy and we'll do that in the next video
Okay, let's put in our sales copy now. So we'll go to Pages. And then we'll go edit our page here. Okay, now let's take this out of here. And then, now you can, if you're designing from scratch, you can do it right in here. If you already have a sales copy that you want to paste in, if you had somebody write it for you, you wrote it externally, which is actually easier to do. Uh, write it externally and then bring it in here afterwards. Okay, so this is our editor, and right here, if you click on this, this is the kitchen sink, and it brings up some more options for you that you can use. Okay, so what we can do now is we go and get our sales copy. Now, if we open up our site, what we can actually do first thing we're going to do to emulate this we put our image to the left here so we go back we could just do this right here click on that and this allows you to paste an image right in that spot okay so let's go back here to images and JPEG and then we have different cover sizes here I'm going to use 350 in this case but whatever you've got there so we go down here and we're going to do full size and we're going to align to the left and we're going to click none here because we don't want the URL being clickable okay and then giving it the, the link juice again so put in a keyword or a key phrase for the title and alternate text here okay and then we're going to insert into post okay so here it is now you'll see that we aligned it left so our text should actually go right to the right here. Now we probably should have put some text in first. There's, it acts a little funny sometimes with WordPress. So what you could do is just go over to HTML here and just put in some text just as a placeholder. Okay, and as you see, it is aligning to the left like we want. Okay, so then you could go ahead and type in your text, or we can go over here and we could grab this and copy. Okay, and then just paste it in here. Control V is a paste. Okay, now. The first thing we should do, since it's already formatted on a page I'm using, we should unformat it. So just come over here where it says H1 and change it to a paragraph. Okay, and then you can better work with this okay, and get it to fit. So if we were to preview this now, let's go over and uh, preview the changes. Okay, here you see what it looks like. Now, we can go ahead and, and uh, change the formats on it. However, the formats that are with the Qubit theme are not the same as what we have on the sales page here. For instance, this H1 tag here produces this color in this size, in this font. Okay, so if you want to change the fonts within WordPress, then you can go to the style sheet and you can change them. Let me open my other instance here. If you go to the style sheet, and you roll down until you see the H1, H2, and so on. Just roll down here. Okay, so here we have there's a font called small. It tells you what the font family is. Header 1, header 2, header 3. Font family is Trabuchet, MS, Lucidia, Grande, Verdana, Arial, Sans Serif. So what that means is it'll start with this one. If your browser can't handle it, it moves to the next one. Okay, so you can change the order of these if you want, and so on. Okay, so if you're familiar with style sheets, you can come in here and you can change things here. Okay, so here's our H2 tag, font size, okay, and so on. So what we could do instead is you can go and you can set the font right inside here. Now to do that we would have to go and put a little bit of code in. So you have to go to HTML and then you can do uh, div 
which is, stands for divider, so div, and then style. And then you can style it how you want here, within the div tags. Okay, now if you don't know how to do that, you could download a free web editor called Composer, like this. Okay, and then we could put in some text here. Okay, and then let's say we want to go to make this a font format font and we want to make it Verdana. And we want it to be red ish like this. And then we want it we can make it a certain size here. Whatever we want to do. Okay, and then well, we won't put each tags in there. So if we were to go look at this now, we'd see that we have a span style. We can, we can just, instead of putting the span, we could just take this part, okay, and put it in the div. Now you can also use the span if you want, but you have to, the spans, but the spans are really for a single block, whereas a div, you can have multiple paragraphs in there. So if we go back now and we put this in front of the text here, so right after div there, and we paste that in. So we have div style equals and so on and so on. Okay, now if we go back to the end of this and we do slash div, this whole block now will take the format of that. Okay, so there it is. It's now in the format that we just gave it. Okay, so this is how you can change the text within the page itself, within the editor. Okay, now we probably want to make that bigger and so on. But that's how you can do it if you don't want to keep with the formatting that is within the WordPress. Okay, so that's how you can do some custom formatting. I just wanted to show you that. It's getting a little complex, but uh, I thought I'd show you it anyway. Okay, so if you're good at CSS or if you have, if you want to use your editor here, you could go and we could, for instance, if we were to make this this big, and we were to look at this now. Okay, so we have a big in front of there now big big so that that's what that does it'll make it bigger and if you pasted that in there the text would look like this all right so that's how you can do that let's just go back here let's uh, make this into an h2 okay let's do a preview okay and there it is there okay so basically you just keep going with that now we're just going to use the default themes here. Now the other thing we could do, if we wanted to color this, we could go over here now and we could change the color here. You can also go into this and then you can use the palette and say we wanted this color. Now if we were to preview. Okay, now we have something that looks more like we started with originally there. Okay, so you can mess around with things doing it that way. All right, and then we could continue with our sales copy here. Et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let's just go from here. So I'll paste it in there. Do a preview. Okay, so that's how it works. Now, you'll notice that we're right up to the edge here on both sides. That can be fixed by setting the padding. Now, I gave you a 
snippet of code called widecolumn.txt. It's a text file. In here it says, note, set the width to minus 20. So our width of our site is 650. So I need to set the width to 630. Don't touch anything else here. Just put this to the width you're using, which is the width of your banner, minus 20. Okay, then take this whole thing, copy it. Now, go back to where you are, your, your CSS. So go into the editor, and as soon as you come into the editor, you end up in the CSS. Now look for wide column, and you're going to paste this right underneath where it says dot wide column. Anything starting with dot is a class, okay? So we're going to go roll down until we see dot wide column. Here it is here, dot wide column. Right under this, just paste the code I gave you in here. Make sure you've adjusted the, the width to be 20 under. Let's update. Now, let's go back to our site here, and let's refresh. Okay, you see that we now have our margins adjusted so that it's fitting easily in there. Okay, and then the rest of it is fairly straightforward. What you're going to do is you're going to put any tables that you have. If we go to our site here, we have a table. Now, what we would do is we would copy the source of that table in. So if we were to copy this table in, down here, okay, so that's how it's going to show up. So we could just center this. Okay, and if you know how to make a style table, you could put it right around there. Otherwise, uh, right under here, you could just, you know, put something like this. Okay, now we can copy this down here. Okay, so if you're not, if you don't know how to use CSS, this is how you can do it. Like that. Okay, so if we're to preview this now. Okay, so we could do something like that. And we could have bolded that. Okay, and then the other thing is at the bottom you're going to put in your payment buttons. You might be putting in an opt-in form. Whenever you're putting in JavaScript for an opt-in form, you would do it in HTML. So you'd go to where you want it, go over to HTML, and then just paste the script down underneath here. Okay, and that would put in your your form code. And then for your payment buttons, again, what we would do is we would go back to the editor here, or back to this. We go into our folder, and we'd go and get our payment button, order button in this case, pop it in here. Okay, and then same thing again. Put in the search engine stuff and then insert into post. Now we want to put this in the center. Okay, and then you would put your link to PayPal right here, so you could just click on the button and then get your, your payment link and put it right in here. Okay, and link to your payment provider, PayPal or whatever. Okay, so basically you just use the editor here to put the rest of your stuff in there. And when you're done, you have a sales page. Let's update this. Okay, so there it is. Basically, there's our sales page. This right now is just connecting to itself, but you would have your, your button connect to your payment processor. Okay, so there it is. There's our sales page. Okay, now in the next video, I'm just going to show you how we can duplicate this table using a web editor and show you how to put it in here. And I'm also going to show you how to get your site into the root directory like I said I would. And we'll do that in the next video. Now just two th more things I want to mention here. About this table down here, let me show you a quick way. If you wanted to put in the same table that's on the sales page, 
like this. Let me show you how you can quickly make up the code. First, you're going to open up Composer or your favorite web editor. Okay, here I'm going to show you in Composer. So we're going to insert a table and we're just going to make it one cell. Okay, and then if you click inside here, right click and do Table Cell Properties. Go to Table and Align Center. Put the border to zero. And then set the width to whatever percentage of the window you want. Let's say 80. Okay, and then click OK. So there is our basic table. Now we're going to go to the CSS editor and we have to give this a name so we'll just call it work. And click OK and it's going to need us to save it. Okay, so we'll just save it in our working folder here. Now what we're going to do is set up a style sheet and we're going to do a element with a specific ID or we're going to do style applied to all elements of a class. Okay, and then we're going to give this a name. We'll call it tab. And you want to make sure it doesn't conflict with anything, so we'll just do D, 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 like that. We'll create the style rule. Okay, and then we're going to go to borders, and we're going to go to width, and we're going to put here, we'll put uh, whatever number of pixels. So we'll say six pixels. and black and here we need solid or dashed or whatever you want but there it is okay now go back to table and cell properties okay and then back to table now we're going to go to advanced and here we're going to pick the class and then we're going to put the class name in there which was T A B D D D, I believe. Click OK and OK. Now I may not have got that right. Let's go back here. I forgot the class already. Four Ds. Okay, so we can go back and edit this. And table advanced. down here put another D on there you get the class name right click OK and OK now when we go to preview you'll see that it, that's what our table looks like so now all we have to do is go into our code here and then we can take the style sheet so right here and grab this piece of code just from there to there. So that's our table code. Now we can go back here and go and put it in our style sheet. So if we go back to appearance and editor, now we can roll right to the bottom and it doesn't really matter where we put it. We'll, we'll put it, well let's put it right at the end here. Okay, now if we go back to our page here, and we'll edit this, and then we'll put the table code in, which is right here. So we'll go to HTML, and we'll go, okay, this is where our table goes. And take all of this out right here okay and then paste this in here and then we want right between this TD and this TD we want to paste in all of this right up to where this line was and so we'll do a cut put that in there just do a paste now and then get rid of this line we put in Okay, now let's preview the changes. Okay, and there's our table there. Oh, we didn't quite get it all in there. But as you see, that's how you do it there. Okay, we missed some code up here somewhere, but you get the idea. You just paste it all in there.
and that's how you use the table. Now, one last thing. Remember that, let's just update this. Remember I told you that I could show you how to set the blog so it's in your root directory. We go to settings. And you'll see right now, this is the address of our blog. But if we wanted to get at it right in our root where we push put in our domain name and our blogs there, we need to change the URL here. So let's save changes. Okay, and then we want to go to permalinks. And then we're just going to update those again. Okay, so let's go to our FTP program. And what we need to do is download two files from where our blog files are stored. In this case, I remember I put it in sales backend. What we need to download is the .ht access and index.php. So let's just download those to our working directory. Okay, and then we want to go to our root directory on this side. And we're going to put those files back into our root directory. Okay, now we have to go into the index.php file. And we have to edit it. Okay, now what we need to do is right here where it says require, in front of this, we need to put, right after the dot, we need to put slash and the name of the directory where our blog files are. Okay, so that was sales backend, I think it was. Yeah, sales backend in my case. So we put sales backend in there. So it says sales backend, slash sales backend, slash WP blog header. We save this. Okay, and then go back to our FTP program. And we're going to upload that. And we're going to upload the .ht access file. All right, now we just go back and we're going to go, well, first you should refresh here. Or you could click on any link in here. Now, if we go to visit site, here's our site. But if I look at the URL, let me show you here. Let's pull this down. You'll see that it is now in the root directory. And to get to where we edit it, we have to go back to sales backend. Okay, now you see you got a 404 here because that page doesn't exist, but we got to go to wp-admin, which is where you go to administer your blog. Okay, and here we are at the back end. Okay, so now our core files are in a separate directory, whereas our site file, or our main site, is on the main domain name. Okay, so now you've created a blog using the power of WordPress, and of course now you can use all the plugins you want to enhance the functionality of your sales page.